In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Greetings. I'm blessed to be with you today. I'm Deacon Joe Cazone from St. Thomas the Apostle. I'm grateful that you're taking part in this prayer service today, Thursday of the fourth week of Ordinary Time. This virtual prayer service has been designed around a morning communion service that would take place each weekday at 6.30 a.m. at St. Thomas. The COVID pandemic caused the cancellation of this service, among other communal events. So this virtual service attempts to keep the community spiritually close while we're physically apart. For those in the local area, close to St. Thomas, I hope you're all safe and warm after our snowfall this past weekend. The biggest one we've had in a few years, it was somewhat of a challenge getting around, but for the most part, it's cleared up now. I think we're in for a little bit more, if I'm not mistaken, by the end of the week. It was very enjoyable to watch from the window, as long as you didn't have to be out there. It seems like we've just started Ordinary Time, and we're already looking to Ash Wednesday and the start of Lent in about two weeks. God is good all the time. Today we remember St. Joseph of Leonissa, who lived in the Kingdom of Naples from 1556 to 1612. His energy and virtue as a student carried him through adulthood and led him to join the Capuchins, where he denied himself the comforts of life to prepare himself for a life of preaching. Joseph was imprisoned and condemned to death for taking care of Christian galley slaves in Constantinople, but was miraculous, miraculously freed. He returned to Italy and preached to the poor and reconciled, feuding families and cities. Joseph was a compelling preacher because his life was as convincing as his words. Thank you for watching and for participating in today's service. I would typically invite all gathered to turn and greet each other. In the spirit of community, please still do this as we envision each other's wonderful handshakes, hugs, and smiles. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In our first reading, we continue with the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could be touched and a blazing fire, and gloomy darkness, and storm, and a trumpet blast, and a voice speaking words such as those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them. Indeed, so fearful was the spectacle that Moses said, I am terrified and trembling. No, you have approached Mount Zion, and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and countless angels in festal gathering, and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and God the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord. 
a responsorial psalm. O God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. O God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. Great is the Lord and holy to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain, fairest of heights, is the joy of all the earth. O God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. Mount Zion, the recess of the north, the city of the great king, God is with her castles. Renowned is he as a stronghold. O God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. As we had heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts. In the city of our God, God makes it firm forever. O God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. O God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. As your name, O God, so also your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Of justice, your right hand is full. O God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. Alleluia, alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and he gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave from there. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. As we continue in the letter to the Hebrews today, we hear the contrast between the way the people of the Old Testament experienced being in God's presence and the way the followers of Jesus Christ experienced that same presence in the New Covenant. The overwhelming experience was tied to trumpets blaring, frightening words, and the fear of death. The awe demonstrated was due to the understanding that nothing impure could stand before God. We've come to know that through and in Christ, we now can approach him as we're all invited. We're drawn to God by the blood Jesus freely offered for us. We, by our baptism, are called to bring this news to others and allow the presence of God to be made known by the way we live our lives every day. Even now, as difficult as it is to be apart from each other physically, we are still called to be in relationship with each other. Our community is strong, and I'm grateful for that, but it takes all of us to keep it together so that we can invite others in and be in, in relationship with them too. In our gospel from Mark, everything that Jesus has been working towards by teaching his disciples, healing those in need, and leading others to his Father is coming to be as he sends them out. His instructions are short and simple. They're told to not take anything with them that they would normally that is, no food, no sack, no money. And he told them to leave any place that doesn't welcome them. They were sent in twos because Holy Scripture demanded the truth be attested by at least two credible witnesses. They knew what they had to do. Jesus had prepared them well, and the Spirit of God was with them. 
others' hospitality was depended on, as was the tradition of the time. People they encountered knew that their faith in God was strong to be able to trust that their needs would be met. The missionaries healed, cast out evil, and anointed. The song that we hear often at St. Thomas, All Are Welcome, speaks to this as we meet others where they are in their journey. None of us are perfect, and neither were the twelve that Jesus sent. They did what they were instructed, and God did the rest. Knowing that Jesus is always there for us is comforting. We're strengthened as we spread the gospel of Jesus by our lives, our actions, our words, and our thoughts. If there is someone that you know that could use a phone call today, or maybe a text message, or even a handwritten note, please take the time to reach out to them. Be a missionary during this pandemic and try to heal someone. It may not happen overnight, but your witness may be the only one that they've encountered. Thank you to those that have reached out and been there for me. There have been so many that I could never thank them all. But by reaching out and with the Spirit of God within, I can try to be that for which others have been for me. I pray that you find the time to be with the Lord today and in the coming days, and that his light shines on you through the darkness. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. As we gather in this virtual prayer service, let us offer these prayers to God and know that where two or more are gathered, he is among us. He hears us and he answers us. For Christians everywhere, for the Holy Catholic Church, for Francis our Pope, for Ronald Hicks our Bishop, and for all bishops, priests, deacons, and all holy people of God who serve the needs of others, that humility and kindness guide their thoughts and actions. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our country and that the world's leaders have the courage to work towards peace in order to promote hope and dignity for all. We pray to the Lord. For the needs of our community, those suffering in body, mind, or spirit, those suffering from the coronavirus, that Christ's healing touch may be felt through the efforts of each one of us. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all students who, are, who will receive the sacrament of confirmation this year, that the Holy Spirit guides their lives, actions, and words in order to bring the word of God to others and be light for the world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for reconciliation among divided friends and families, and that love and respect overcomes hate and indifference, leading to positive change. We pray to the Lord. And for those intentions in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Hasten to the aid of your faithful people who call upon you, O Lord, we pray, and graciously give strength in their human weaknesses, so that being dedicated to you in complete sincerity, they may find gladness in your remedies both now and in the life to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await in the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace, in unity and accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And now instead of sharing Holy Communion together, we can share the prayer of spiritual communion by St. Padre Pio. He celebrated Mass daily and at various times during the day, he would pause and pray, making a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And again, thank you for joining in this prayer service today. I pray that our prayers of healing are heard and that you feel the embrace of our community now and always. I hope to see you soon. Peace. Christ with me.